Hey everyone. Now I mentioned a couple of years ago in a video that I was in the process of making a 3D spectrum analyzer. Well, I had a lot of questions on how that's going and to be honest, it wasn't doing much for the last couple of years. But lately, I've got back into it and got some help to do this, so it's progressing. So for those who don't know, I'll show you what the plan is. Now here's a bit of the 3D spectrum analyzer that you saw in the background, but I'll get back to that in a minute. Now how this all started was I used to use spectrum analyzers like this way back in the 90s. Now this is a proper piece of test equipment, so you can see, you can see I've modeled my design off that. That's just floating away there, forget that. So you can see I've got, for the moment, the same buttons, but one thing they all have is the frequency span and amplitude keys. So I made sure mine had that. So you can see, even on other spectrum analyzers, they've still got a frequency span and amplitude. They're pretty fundamental. So on mine, I've got a 2D mode here, which is very simple. Now one thing I learned about the green trace is that green is apparently for your human eye very easy to see detail. So that's probably why they use green. Anyway, that's what I'm using. I'm using green for that. And you can see these buttons will bring up the submenus over here. So on an original one here, when you press them, the little submenus came up on the screen and you press the corresponding button here. On mine, I'll just change what's written on the button. So span, and then you, they'll, they'll change what, what comes up there. So you get the idea. And because I don't like to use the mouse, there'll be keyboard shortcuts for all this, like F, S, and A for frequency, span, amplitude. You can pause it with a space bar or press the hold button, whichever. So that's that. Now that's the RTL FFT input, but it can also do hack RF. So let's say you go to hack RF, suddenly I've got 20 mega bandwidth, no real antenna, just the one inside here. So that's radio stations, but you can see it got a bit slower, but it's still there and you can go to 3D on that and Again, once, well, nothing there, nothing there to look at. So go back to RTL and go 2D. You see, that's there. Now I'm doing all of this in Python because I'm not really a programmer and Python's pretty easy. So just doing some code here. I've made a good start with it, but now, as I said, I've got a, a coder who's helping me out with this and we're just, you know, smashing out some code here, having a bit of fun, having some laughs and whipping up a spectrum analyzer. But another benefit of it being Python is it doesn't have to just run on what it's compiled for. So over here, I've got a Windows tablet. Right, so over here I've got hold of a tablet of someone. It's a Windows one, so it's a Windows machine. And because it's Python, it runs on here too. So you can see I've just got the RTL SDR dongle here. And because it's touchscreen, all these buttons work nicely. So you still hold it and do stuff and, and that sort of thing. So it runs on Windows. Haven't got a MacBook to check it, but should make it work on a MacBook as well. Now, a lot of people have got these RTL SDR dongles. They're pretty common, but also somewhat common is the Hack RF. And instead of using just FFT, where you grab a bunch of samples and process FFT to get the frequency bins, they also have a mode with, through, through programs to do a sweep. So the Hack RF in particular can do a really fast sweep across a whole bunch of frequencies and just give you the power rather than the samples. And the RTL SDR can do it too, but a lot slower. So what I'm gonna do is incorporate something like this. This is what I've done just as a back end. And what you can see here is it's sweeping the whole 2.4 gig band, which is 100 meg wide, and it's doing it at 80 sweeps a second. So what you can see here is some channel one stuff there, some channel 11, <laughs> some uh, Bluetooth stuff here, or it could be the mouse spinning around. But I've got a laptop here just on 2.4 gigs. So if I do an iPerf test on it, you'll see, see channel one's going nuts. I have to figure out this bit here because that's not right. But you can see it's a good way to get the spectrum uh, visible. So what I'm gonna do is incorporate that method as well into the spectrum analyzer. Now, if you don't have an RTL device or a Hack RF, there's something else that I've got in mind as well. And that is a microphone. So go over here, just using the audio as the input, you can do a spectrum analysis of that. Now, before anyone points this out, I'm well aware that that display is wrong. And if you look at it, you'll see what I mean. I've got to, I've got to sort that out. I'm, I've not really done it yet, but this is gonna be logarithmic for audio in, in the frequency range. And you can see, it's not right, but I'm well aware it's not right and it will be right before it's released. So anyway, that's what I'm up to so far. So whether you've got a microphone or an RTL dongle or a Hack RF, you'll be able to do some stuff. So there'll, there'll be some cool sort of effects here. This is a rough draft of some stuff. Um, there'll be markers, there'll be, there'll be ways to measure things like there's, there's the peak there, but it doesn't mean much at the moment and just some stuff spinning around, but it's getting there. All right, so there it is. It's been sat doing nothing for a couple of years, but it's back in progress and I uh, hope to get something out soonish. We'll see. Anyway, another reason I put the audio on there wasn't just because you might not have one of these and you might still want to play with a spectrum analyzer. There are uses for audio for things like vibration analysis, which I may put some functions in there. So I've got a, like a digital signal processing class behind here that, that does calculations and stuff. 
I've got lots of ideas, but it's gotta have the basics. So like I said, one of those old spectrum analyzers, like I showed you, just back here, they, they have proper tools for measuring things. Like you can measure amplitude, you can measure bandwidth between this peak and that peak and set markers and measure stuff. That's what I'm gonna put in here because that was the main thing that's lacking in all these waterfall spectrum analyzers that are out there for FFT stuff. They're not usable as real tools. Now, I know it's not ever gonna be one of those, so um, don't get upset if you're a radio guy, but speaking of radio guys, I wanted to um, get hold of one of these to make sure I don't miss anything. So I went, found some old radio guys in, in, in town here and said, hey, anyone got one of these old units? So there's one guy there, he got interested as well. So I've got that connection there to, you know, steer this if I'm missing something and go, how does this work on a real spectrum analyzer? Because it's been a long time and he's uh, given me some tips there. So I'm gonna try and get as much good functionality as I can. And either way, it's just gonna be a good spectrum analyzer. So the Top Dog Spectrum Analyzer is progressing. I can't say when it's gonna be out there, but when it, does, when it is out there, I'll let you know. Anyway, that'll do for now. Till next time, take it easy. And yes, the Top Dog Spectrum Analyzer is going to be in correct English. We've center written correctly, analyzer, and everything else.